Hey everybody, Nico here again with a new painting and I also want to narrate, uh, narrate the time lapse. I uh, just wanted to show you uh, a little bit about this painting because uh, this was also a commission done for Procreate um, for the 4.3 update uh, and also to show text. So I had a blast doing this. I was actually sitting in the offices of uh, the Savage team, the Procreate guys, and yeah, such a good team. And uh, uh, so this is like a homage to like a movie, typical movie police station. And um, usually when I, in most of my art, I pick a two or mostly three point perspective. This is a one point perspective head on. Also be able to, uh, you can still sort of edit the text here. So if I just uh, jump over to Procreate, you can see my layers here. And uh, for example, a police uh, sign, I can edit this and I can go in and, you know, do whatever I want. So, uh, and it's, you know, you can edit style as well. You know, I can click and, uh, you know, pick different fonts and colors or whatever I want here. Choose different size or, you know, the distance between the letters and uh, all kinds of stuff. So it's super intuitive, uh, very powerful and uh, a lot of fun. And I think it also makes it so much more uh, real when you put in all this text. It's uh, it makes the painting become uh, more realistic, I feel. So, and uh, you can scale and rotate and still keep the, the text editable. But if you put it into perspective or you, you start to distort it, then it will rasterize. So just make sure that when you put text in on the sides like this or put it into perspective that you have uh, that it is a bit bigger than what you want to scale it down to. Um, if you just scale it uh, without distorting it, you can scale it however you want and it will keep its vector crispness, but uh, when it's rasterized, it's pixels and then you have to just uh, yeah, worry about that a bit. So you can also see my, my layers here. And I, I try to keep my layers stack as tight as possible. I don't go bananas with the layers. And also in Procreate, you have a layer limit. If, you, if your resolution is high, like on this piece, it's 6,000 pixels wide. So it's fairly high uh, resolution. Um, but um, uh, as long as stuff doesn't overlap like a character, I will always keep on separate layers so you can move around, you can warp, liquefy, whatever. But as long as stuff doesn't overlap, I will put it into the same layer. So just to tidy up like my the cat and the police guy, they're on the same layer. Not when I painted it, but you know, I just keep tidying up so I can still move them separately or adjust them separately as long as I do like a selection around them. So, yep. So let me just uh, jump over to the time lapse and I'll explain how I did it. So here's the time lapse and just testing a few brushes at the beginning there. I set up my one point perspective, which you don't see in the time lapse, but it, it is there in the middle of the screen, just one vanishing point. So all my uh, Vertical and horizontal lines are just uh, parallel and non in non perspective, and then you see my the room is sort of coming towards us. The walls on the sides are are sort of showing us where the vanishing point is. So this was uh, you know a head on perspective, and I I wanted this sort of. Uh, uh, where you get the information, like the information desk, uh, where you have the windows on the left side, <clears throat> and I, and then the window on the right side. So I, all at even at the beginning, I'm 
thinking of a too light situation. So I, I want sort of the industrial lights in the ceiling that will come later. I, uh, the time lapse is fast here, but I, I basically did like a silhouette per, uh, layer for each floor, ceiling and wall. So I can paint on them separately and then I used curves to push them into color. So now I'm painting the ceiling, uh, the, the lamps in the ceiling, non-perspective, and then I push it into perspective. And then the, the cords they're hanging in are, are in the separate uh, layer. Um, and then uh, also used uh, um, to have some glowing effects like where the lamps are have the same sort of selection in the in the add layer for example um, and then keeping on painting around a bit so I'm, I'll turn this light on and off the glowing part because it if you want to pick color from your painting you uh, if you have the glow on you'll pick uh, you, you'll pick that color as well so and then keep adding detail and I, I kind of work in silhouette a lot like with the plants you see on the right side and just to make sort of the composition work uh, like it should and now sort of the fence uh, where you where you hold on the railing down the stairs and I had like a checker uh, here's the dirt layer for the the floor I think so I paint that also without perspective and then I put it in perspective here's the ceiling like how the ceiling is I put it that that into perspective I alpha lock it and then I paint the colors I want so I, I'm sorry about the quality of the time lapse here that's my fault because I <clears throat> I did it put it I didn't put it on the highest quality in the settings before I did the painting uh, so make sure if you want a really good high quality even 4k uh, uh, time lapse you need to put that into the app settings in the beginning before you uh, make a new canvas and, and do your painting so this was uh, yeah a little bad quality here but I, I hope I hope it comes through anyway <clears throat> and then I so the room behind uh, sort of the information desk there is on separate layers and then I have like the glass, you see the reflection of the lamp, that's on a separate layer uh, in screen mode, I think. Uh, so I, as long as stuff isn't overlapping, like I said earlier, I try to keep them uh, tidy up. So the text just boomed in here. So I did that on, I have a couple of still active text layers, like the police uh, over the information desk, but then as soon as I put stuff into perspective, I will merge them into one layer uh, because they don't overlap and then I can alpha lock and paint them with the color I want. And uh, yeah, so I keep adding small details here and there. So it's all the big stuff first, you know, and then like in this painting, you saw I introduced color fairly early, but at the, f at the total start, I work in grayscale. So that's usually how I do it. Um, and this is also very often how I work. I make a scene, I make a location first, uh, and I want to have a story going on there, but I want to, so now I started on the character, the first sort of movie homage. But I, I want to have um, the scene, sort of the location found first, so I can, you know, get inspired by this location for a story so that's often how I do especially if I if I'm not working after a script or something that's then it's different but if I'm just doing my own thing then it's uh, I think it's so much fun to just uh, yeah make a environment and then be inspired by it so as you see on this uh, secretary uh, sitting in the phone um, she is uh, she's drawn classic drawn like I sometimes I block out uh, just silhouettes when I paint stuff but in this case I also wanted her to be like a 
to look like uh, the, the homage I was aiming for. Uh, so it's kind of like a caricature of another secretary from a movie. <laughs> Um, sitting in the phone. Uh, but if you're nerd enough, uh, but that's like sub uh, crazy level nerd, you'll figure out where that uniform is from as well. Um, yeah, but I'm not gonna hold it against you if you don't recognize it. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's basic. Like the room is fairly finished, uh, the scene is set. So this could be uh, also like a painted background for animation, right? It would be done in the same way. You have the layers. You can basically animate the character coming up from the stairs, walking behind the railing. You just have to switch which layer uh, the character is in. So now second character. So here you see I'm more blocking it out. So that's sort of I feel like the two main ways of painting, drawing anything is like either work from line art um, or blocking out in silhouette. Then uh, when I paint freely uh, and not trying to make something look like something, I very often do, if I'm just sketching freely, I often do like a combination of it. I think it's uh, very good to be able to do both, both the blocking way and the drawing way. So uh, both the painting way, I would say, and both the, the drawing way. Um, but the combination is, uh, is probably stronger than, than just knowing one of them. Um, I feel with the, with the drawing, with the line art, you, you tend to lock details before you even know the, your values, colors, shading, that sort of stuff. But if you if you block out, you'll you'll still uh, have that creative freedom with the details late on when you have the colors, the shading, everything. So that's sort of the the main two differences, I would say. And then I very often don't uh, want the outline at the end. And if you don't have it at the beginning, you don't have to get rid of it. But like you see now, it's it's a bit more combined. It's like an illustration, but I also block out a bit. So <clears throat> I at the beginning I just uh, painted a random character there, but I thought, nah, I want to make uh, the guy with the donuts. Uh, he should also be like a homage to a to a movie, so he's gonna <clears throat> be changed a bit. I'm also working uh, with uh, adjusting colors and shading with curves often. Um, it's not just something I do at the beginning or the end, but all throughout I might go in and adjust curves. Here I did some liquefying or warping to get his posture a bit more caricaturized. And you see I to darken it to get that more contrasty saturated look I had the overlay layer on top which was uh, clip masked so it's a more happy happy dude here but yeah he will be totally changed as you as you s have seen at the at the final result not totally sure why the video is uh, having this sort of pulses of bad quality and then moving into good quality but uh, yeah, I'm sorry for that. I sort of just wish it stayed like this, especially in the areas where nothing is going on. But I keep updating, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, so now stuff is happening. Now I'm changing him to be another homage. Slightly changed homage, though. I think in a, or I know in the rig, in the movie, this is from he. He didn't have a smile, but a, but a, what's the opposite of a smile? A frown? No. Uh, the, the mouth pointing 
downwards instead of upwards. And he wasn't delivering no donuts either. <laughs> but I keep just working on the detail, you know, from big uh, chunks to the smaller stuff. And very often I will work all over in sort of passes. So first pass to do the whole character, second pass to get his, some shading, third pass. So I don't work, like for example on the donuts, I don't work on the donuts up until they're as realistic as I want them and then move on to the rest of the character. I keep pushing things um, kind of parallel in front of me. So it's all being upgraded at the same time basically. So here's the cat. So that's much more a silhouette way of doing it here. So I had the references of course looking at this one. I had to on all of these just to make them look like I <coughs> to add like the homages. So to give you a clue, the cat may or may not be totally similar to one of the homages. Yeah. We had actually a cat like this some years ago. We called it Sol, which means sun in Norwegian. It's a very cute cat, very lazy, a huge but a very nice cat. I'm probably working on some small details. Sometimes, yeah, here we go, a bit more stuff going on. Sometimes I'm also a bit lost, like towards the end of a painting, I might work on a tiny detail somewhere in the time lapse, and I sometimes have a hard time finding where the activity is going on as well but uh, and the whiskers on the cat I also did in a separate layer because then I can alpha lock them and then give them the exact shading I want you know but the whiskers are important that really I think that makes the cat come much more to life ah and who do we have here Hobart's most wanted a very good friend of mine and the genius, one of the geniuses behind, I guess the main genius behind Procreate. But there's a whole team of geniuses behind Procreate, but yep, that's the main. So that's it. That's the time lapse. Uh, sorry about the quality. I will make sure my. Uh, my time-lapse settings are better for the next one, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of this. And keep painting, keep kick ass, and uh, see you again soon.